and welcome to today's webinar. My name is Benjamin Taylor. I am joined by Marco Medecki. Today's webinar will cover threaded joints in 3D printed parts and a comparison of those methods. On the agenda, we're going to start with a brief overview of the MarkForge platform, after which I'll discuss why fasteners are needed in 3D printing, and then I'll cover different methods for producing threaded joints in those 3D printed parts, and then I will walk you through how we tested several different methods, and we'll talk about the results with an analysis of how those methods differ from each other and hopefully be able to help you choose the best type of fastener for your application. After which we'll go into any questions. MarkForce is the only 3D printer company that offers you a complete solution to produce high strength 3D printed parts for industrial applications. We provide everything from the software to the printers to the raw materials that you need to produce high strength fiber reinforced parts as well as metal parts so that you can 3D print things that you need for your high strength industrial applications. So why fasteners? In most industrial 3D printing applications, the 3D printed part is acting as a single element in a larger assembly. So that part has to connect into other parts of the assembly, which is why you need fasteners. Threaded joints are a great way to create a strong connection between parts that can be serviced. So you can remove the bolts and replace the part or do whatever you need. For example, here is a fixture for a milling vise. The black soft jaws were printed to hold that oddly shaped part during a milling process. And the part is printed with a hole on the back side that receives a heat set threaded insert. That threaded insert gives us a threaded connection that is both very strong and very durable. So we can remove this vise jaw and use it over and over again, depending on the setup. Likewise, here is a 3D printed welding fixture. The metal clamp does most of the holding and also takes most of the heat from the welding operation, but that base block is 3D printed to hold the clamp at the correct angle. And that base has, again, heat set threaded inserts to give us a strong connection between the clamp and the 3D printed base. So now let's jump in to different methods for creating threaded fasteners. First of which is heat set threaded inserts. These are very common in traditional plastic manufacturing. They are essentially just a brass piece that has the desired thread on the inside. And then there's a geometry on the outside that allows the plastic to grab on and keep that threaded insert not only from pulling out of the part, but also from rotating. This means that you need a soldering iron to install the parts and that soldering iron heats up the brass insert it pushes into the part and that plastic is melted and then reflows to grab onto the insert here we use just a McMaster car um, M6 threaded insert and they cost about 50 cents per insert the first style we tested with the heat set inserts was putting the insert on the top of the part and then pulling the sample piece so that the insert is wanting to pull out of the top surface. You can see here that the test sample has four holes on the outside that allow it to mount into the pull fixture. And here are the results from having a heat set thread insert on the front. The maximum load was about 3,200 newtons or 720 pounds and here the geometry around the insert is what actually ends up failing the thread is perfectly fine and the the bolt obviously isn't failing at that load it's just the plastic around the part or around the insert is failing the next style of fastening we tested was it having a heat set threaded insert on the back side of the part this means that that threaded insert has to pull through the entire portion of the part and the hole that that threaded insert is installed in is actually tapered which means that the 
insert while being pulled actually is making the part expand. Um, and here's the results from that test. The max load here was about 3,100 newtons or 700 pounds. And again, the plastic around the insert is what's failing. The thread inside the insert is perfectly fine. The last heat set test we wanted to do was adding fiber into the part. The heat set threaded insert was still on the back side of the part, but we added continuous carbon fiber around the mount holes, also around the hole for the heat set threaded insert, and then on the very top we put an isotropic infill layer to make it so that that insert not only had to expand the carbon fiber rings around it, but also pull itself out through that isotropic infill. So you can see here the test results with um, carbon fiber added into your part are significantly stronger. The max load is about 7,300 newtons or 1,600 pounds. The, in this instance, the carbon fiber is actually failing. The part loads up until that carbon fiber um, fails because it's much stiffer than the plastic around it. And then the threaded insert just pulls through the part. The next style of fastening we tested was cutting threads. In this, the idea behind this is you print a hole in your part and then you form those threads after printing. These can be cut with a tap. You, these can be made by just running a machine screw into the part, or you can use a special screw designed for plastics. This is very easy to design. I just make my holes the size of a 75% thread engagement for my specific fastener. But since you are cutting the thread into the wall of the 3D printed part, you are limited in the size of thread. I try to keep it below M10 for these, or for this style of fastening. And this is because the difference in minor and major diameters of the thread can't be greater than your wall thickness because you start to cut into your infill instead of just cutting into the wall of the 3D printed parts. Another limitation of this style is it's not suited for repeated use. Because that thread form is actually plastic, if you take a part in and out more than five or six times, the thread gets, gets uh, degraded and it's not really useful. So for single use applications, these are great. The first test we did was cutting the thread with a, an M6 machine screw. So I just ran that machine screw straight into the part right off the printer and then mounted the test sample into our pull fixture. Notice that the thread length here was 12.7 millimeters. That height is the same height as our heat set threaded inserts from the first tests. I just wanted to make sure that the thread length was even between all the samples. So when you just run a machine screw into your part, the max load is about 2,600 newtons or 600 pounds. And again, the thread is what fails here. You start pulling the thread out of the part. Next is cutting those threads in your part with a screw specially designed for plastic. We just bought an M6 screw off McMaster and ran it into the hole that we printed in our part. And again, I tried to maintain that 12.7 millimeter thread length. And here your maximum load is only about 1800 newtons or 400 pounds. Um, and the thread is getting pulled out of the part. Next up, we tested cut threads. We printed a hole and then we used a tap to cut that M6 thread into the part. Um, one pro tip for you here, the heat from cutting the thread will actually build up in the tap, which means you can melt the thread after a while. So if you're tapping multiple holes, just go slow and make sure you're not heating up the tap to the point that you're melting the plastic. And on these tests, I kept the thread length at that 12.7 millimeters as well, just to keep everything the same. 
Here are the test results from a tapped thread. Your max load is around 3,000 newtons or 700 pounds. And again, that fastener is pulling out of the 3D printed part. I did try printing the threads. So in my CAD software, before I exported the part to the 3D printer, I modeled the thread. Um, and when I fastened it into the test fixture, I made sure that I had that 12.7 millimeter thread length. When you print a thread, you can get about 2200 newtons of pullout strength or 500 pounds. And the thread itself is actually getting um, pulled out as the failure mode. The last thing we wanted to talk about was nuts. Um, including nuts in your assembly is cheap and fast. It's very easy. And we tested two specific styles. First was having a nut that's flush with the bottom surface of your part. You'll see that this is actually stronger, but um, that nut is not captive, so you'll need a wrench or something on the backside to be able to tighten it. And you will also need to uh, make sure that the other parts of the assembly don't run into that nut because it will be proud of the bottom surface. And then we tested having a captive nut that is inside a formed hole in the part um, that will keep the nut from rotating so you don't need a wrench. You can just run a, run a fastener in from the top. Um, there's no special tools required with this and there's no size restriction. Any nut that you can buy, you can create a hole in your 3D printed part to accept it. So here's our test set up with a nut on the bottom surface. We just grabbed an M6 nut off McMaster um, and mounted the test sample into the part. You can actually see this test sample had been tested, so you can see the impression from the nut on that bottom surface. Our nut height here was five millimeters, which is less than the 12.7 millimeter thread length we've been using but that's not really important here because the nut is not failing, it's the 3D printed part that is. And here are the results for having a nut flush with the bottom surface of your part. The maximum load is around 3000 newtons or 660 pounds. And the failure mode here is the nut is actually getting pulled through that bottom surface. Um, the next test we did was having that captive nut on that bottom surface. We used the same McMaster um, square nut that, is, that has an M6 thread. And here are the results from having that captive nut on the back side. The maximum load is about 2,600 newtons or 575 pounds. And the nut is actually getting pulled through the surface that it's contacting inside that cavity but the, that surface is failing much lower than the maximum load. It's actually failing, you can see on the graph, around 1200 newtons. And after that, it, began, it begins to load the infill, so it still has strength, but um, the initial surface fails at 1200 newtons, so I would design around that. And here's our test method for breaking all these 3D printed parts. We have a 50 kilonewton universal testing machine made by Instron here in our facility. I just used an M6 thread and I clamped that into the top portion of the jaw with, a, with the upper fixture. And then I would bolt the test sample onto a lower fixture that I clamped in the lower jaw. And then I would pull the part at about seven millimeters per minute. Uh, I tried to be nice and slow. So these test results aren't gonna be great for high impact but more of a constant force. Uh, here's a comparison of the results for these M6 threads. Obviously, the, the strongest option for you is a heat set threaded insert within a fiber reinforced part. It's clear up there at about 7,300 newtons, which is way bigger than any of your other options. And down at the bottom is that uh, screw made uh, for plastic. Here you can see a map of the load versus the extension of the part. Most of the extension during the test is actually coming from the geometry of the overall part flexing. And that's why the carbon fiber reinforced part is so much stronger is because the fibers are taking all of the load.
most of the other parts are similar in size and elongation during the tests. So I boiled this down into a chart to compare all the different methods. This is useful when you are designing a bolted joint so that you can pick um, a method that best suits what you are trying to accomplish. If you just need incredible strength, just reinforce your part with fiber and throw in a heat set threaded insert. That's gonna cost you um, a little bit of time, money, and you're gonna have to have some special tools. But if you just have a low uh, strength application and you just need to get it done fast, just throw in a machine screw and let it cut its own thread. And then there's different options in between and you can reference this chart to help you pick the best fastener for your specific application. So the key take takeaways here are that the fasteners themselves are not failing, it's the printed part that's failing. So adding fiber into that printed part will make it significantly stronger. Um, but there are several lower fidelity methods that are perfectly adequate for a lot of applications. Um, but most of those lower fidelity options are not really suited well for repeated use. So I hope this was helpful and that you can now feel a little bit more confident in choosing a fastening method for all of your different parts. And with that, we'll move on to any questions.